In the previous lesson, we looked at the addition rule of exponents. Let's quickly revise. So we said that when these two are the same, then you add the exponents. And when you have something like this, then we shouldn't make it a 4 because of the exponents. So you leave it as a 2, and then you add, and you get 6. When you get something like this, the 3 and the 2 do not have exponents, and so you can say 3 times 2, which is 6. Then the x's, you would add the exponents, and that would become 7. The y's, you would add the exponents, and that would become 6. And so that's that. Now we're going to look at the subtraction rule for exponents. Now this will obviously be the opposite to addition. So when, with the addition rule, when we multiplied the bases, then we added exponents. So now when we divide the bases, then we will minus exponents. So for example, here we have a divide sum. So these two x's are the same, and so we minus their exponents. And so it will always be the top one minus the bottom one. So it will be 3 minus 1, which is 2. And then this one will be 2 minus 1, which is 1. And so the answer is x squared y. Here's one over here. Now a lot of students, they cancel the 2's out. But guys, you've got to remember how we did the, the addition rule. Do the 2's have exponents? Yes, they do. So you've got to leave it as a 2 and stick to the exponent rule, which says that you minus. And so that will be 2 to the 5. Does the 12 and the 3 have exponents? No, they don't. So you can treat them as normal numbers, 12 divided by 3, which is 4. But Kevin, I thought we have to minus them. No, guys, that's the exponents. The exponents have to minus, but the numbers, you treat them normally. Remember how we did 3x squared y4 times by 2x3 y8, for example. Does the 3 and the 2 have exponents? No, they don't. So we multiplied them normally, and that became 6. It's only the exponents that we added, and then the y became 12. So if it's a normal number, treat them like normal numbers. If it's an exponent, well then they have their own rules. And so then we look at the x's, and so we minus the exponents, and then we look at the y's, and we minus the exponents. And so the answer is 4xy. So 25 and 5, they do not have exponents, and so you can treat them normally. So that just becomes 5, and then x 3 and then x2, so you minus the exponents, that's just x1, and then 4 minus 1, that just becomes y to the power of 3. Alright, so here's some practice examples. So with the x's, we minus the exponents, and that just, that just becomes x. Then if we look at the y's, you minus the exponents, and that just becomes 3. The 6 and the 2 are normal numbers, so you can type in on your calculator minus 6 divided by 2. That will get rid of the Wait, what do I do at the negative? You just type it in the calculator and that will give you negative 3. Then 3 minus 1 is 2. And then for the y's, it's 8 minus 1, which becomes y7. Here we have 20 divided by 5, which is just 4. And then 5 minus 2 just becomes x3. And then 8 minus 2 just becomes y to the power of 6. All right, so now if we look at number four, if we look at the twos, do they have exponents? Yes, they do. So now you can't say two divided by two. You leave it as a two, and then you minus the exponents, and so that becomes a two. Then x3 and x just becomes x squared, and then this y8 and this y1 just becomes y7. Then if you want to, you can change this to a four, because two to the power of two is four, and so your answer is that. Here we have a 2 but, and then a 2, but they have got exponents, so we can't say 2 divided by 2. Instead, we leave it as a 2, and we say 7 minus 3, which is 4. Then the x's become x to the 0. So 10 minus 10 is 0, and then the y's become 7. Now, x to the power of 0 is just 1, because anything to the power of 0 is 1. And so that just sort of falls away. And so the answer is 2 to the 4, y7. But now 2 to the 4 is 16, so you can say 16y7. For the next one, does the 6 and the 3 have exponents? No, they don't. So we can divide them. Type it in on the calculator. Minus 6 divided by minus 3 gives you a positive 2. Then the x's will subtract, and so that just becomes x2. 
for the y's, there is no y at the bottom, so you just keep it as y3. All right, so these ones are quite interesting. So what do we do here? Well, what you do is, because of the top, we've got two things that we're multiplying. Let's do that first. So that's from the previous lesson. So the three and the two, do they have exponents? No, they don't, so you just multiply them. Now, when you are multiplying over here, then the x's, the exponents, well done if you remember that they should add. It doesn't become eight. You're not multiplying them. They are exponents. Then at the bottom, we just have six x three. Now, does the six and the six have exponents? No, they don't. So you can divide them. And six divided by six is just one, so they cancel out. For the x's, we minus their exponents, and that gives us x three. Number eight, you would first do the top. The two and the four do not have exponents, and so that just becomes eight. X to the power of seven, because you're adding. Then the Y just stays as Y eight. At the bottom, we have four X squared. The eight and the four do not have exponents, and so you simply divide them. Eight divided by four is two. For the X's, you minus their exponents, and that becomes X five. And then the Y doesn't have anything to go with, and so it's just Y eight. Do these twos have exponents? Yes, they do. So you cannot say four. So what you do is you say that the top is equal to two to the power of, and then you add the exponents and that will give you 12. Then at the bottom you have two to the power of six. Now, do the twos still have exponents? Yes, they do. So you can't say two divided by two, but what you can say is two, and then you subtract the exponents and it becomes two to the power of six.